I think uh, I think our host and master of ceremonies, Pawan Kolkarni, thought that I failed in the first test, as he wanted to give me another chance to do better. So I will try. I will try this time to do better than in, on the first time. Um, let me start by saying that some thir about 30 years ago, I had the privilege of sharing a panel, I was time myself, sharing a panel with uh, Bill Gates. And I asked him, how do you define this generation, this century, up to the end of this century, in two words? He said, artificial intelligence. I learned from that uh, wisdom and realized that we should uh, listen and learn and live with the words, two words, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is not only going to make machines better, more knowledgeable and more intelligent, but is going to change human beings as well to become better human beings. Most of the time people think of artificial intelligence as addressed to the machine. It's at the same time as effective in changing us, the ability to think, our memory span, our physical power, and it can prevent diseases instead of treating them and in many other ways. I'm not here to talk about artificial intelligence. But I want to say that in cybersecurity, we definitely need to have an artificial intelligence strategy. We need to have artificial intelligence experts on how to develop uh, the uh, capabilities in cybersecurity. We need to move from cybersecurity protection to cybersecurity resilience and to think of how can we become resilient and not just protective. And uh, I think we need an artificial intelligence mesh, mesh for smart um, analytic technologies. We need to know how to work, use big data again in, our, in cyber security resilience. And we need a regional, you know, in cyber security, and I have chaired many UN agencies, as we said earlier, and one of them was on internet governance. And I formed the Internet Governance Forum and I chaired its first meeting in Munich in 1992. That meeting focused on the need on controlling and managing the internet. Without managing the internet, there will be no security in this world. And unfortunately, rightfully so, the US owns the internet. It's my asset, the Americans say. And I have written to John Biden as speaker of this Senate, telling him that we need this for the safety of the U.S. and of the world. We need to develop a management control, a, a, a governance system. I'm not talking about the ownership. The most valuable asset in the world today is the Internet. It's probably 100 trillion worth of dollars. And although I am the chairman of the largest intellectual property company in the world, I cannot put a value on the Internet. It is an American asset, of course, and we believe in ownership. But unless we use the internet, unless we develop some kind of control, the only control available in the internet, by the way, the only system is on the domain system, the domain name system, that's all. But it's a free, the Americans' approach is that this is a free, another world. It is not in this world, so nobody can control it. There are no boundaries in the cyberspace, in the virtual world. So there is no cross-country relationship. 
There is no sovereignty for anybody. I respect all of that. What I'm talking about is being able to develop a system of control so that it is not abused, it's not used for the purposes which is what it was not created for. If we cannot do that, let's at least do it in cybersecurity. Let us try to develop, and, or, and I call on the cybersecurity community, to develop a model standard on cybersecurity with codes, same codes, same laws, and uh, we believe, as I said earlier, in standard setting. We are, part, we are on the committee that sets the ISO standards for the world, on the technical committee. We've been on that committee for 30 years now, serving on how to set ISO standards. And that's why the ISO system is working well. We need to develop standards, laws, and uniform policies on security globally. We need to develop a cybersecurity culture because it is intended for people as much as it is intended for the people who control the cybersecurity system. The cybersecurity system is not just for the military or government, it is for us, the ordinary citizen like myself. So we need to create this culture and awareness of the, this. Um, we need a dedicated cybersecurity resilience department in the military, in every branch of the military. And we need uh, cybersecurity infrastructure development. I think we, ha we lack a great deal in our cybersecurity technologies and in our cybersecurity systems. We are much behind compared to other technologies and compared to other industries in the world. There is much more that can and should be done in that, uh, in that direction. I think that uh, cybersecurity is now more important than any other aspect of the military operations because it's the one that touches on everything. It touches on your ground forces, on your air force, on your uh, every, every part of your operation. And we are not aware yet, and we think cybersecurity is for just one objective or for one purpose or one department or one country. We need cross-country and cross-sector policies on cybersecurity. And that is lacking worldwide and is lacking at the country level. Uh, I think we need to, to put, again, to be more um, concentrated in our look at the needs for cybersecurity development for the benefit of everybody and for the benefit of the military themselves because the military are just as much as I am a target the military are a target for the cybersecurity attacks. So the, 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 this is one cross-sector and cross-country and cross-activity service that has impact on everything. So we need to address it in a more macro approach rather than just focusing on cybersecurity in a particular field. If it hits that field, it hits me. If it hits the other field, it hits me as well. So uh, the, the cybersecurity approach should be more, as I said, uh, cross-sector and cross-country in, in, uh, in, all, in all possible ways. I would like also here to, to emphasize uh, the importance of realizing that we need in our chain, in our schooling in the military, at least I have done it in the private sector. We have started this year the first college of its kind in the world. A college that does not graduate educated people. It graduates inventors. From Talal Abu Ghazali University of Innovation, no student will graduate by an exam. He will graduate by an, exam, an invention. 
if he doesn't come up with an ICT-based invention, he doesn't graduate. So we're moving to education for innovation. Unfortunately, in general, including in the military, we graduate individuals who become knowledgeable and look for jobs. If we graduate inventors, they will create jobs for others. And as we, ha as we know, all, you all know, the dropouts of universities like Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, who did not complete university studies because they realized that this, the college has nothing to teach them, more than what is on the net. In fact, no teacher in the world can provide ed education which is not available on the internet. The job of the teacher is redundant. As an accountant, I started an, as an accountant and I chaired all the U international organizations on accounting. There will be no need for accountants in the future. You will just have the international accounting standards. You plug them into the accounts of the client and you get the report. You need technicians rather than public certified accountants like Asmat, who is a, a, a chartered accountant from the UK. The, the, the auditor and the accountant will be the, the program. Similarly in the, in, the, in the military, I think we should, in our military schools, and I know they are all, all over the world, they should teach innovation and not teach you the military skills you can move and the world is moving from teaching to learning you can learn the military skills because they are all all skills are available on the internet but what you need to be taught is how to become inventive how can you develop new technologies and new inventions and that's why we we are now ahead and we could be a global organization in our over 100 offices all over the world, not because we're the best, not because we have the resources, not because we, are, uh, we come from a great country, only because we are a knowledge organization. And the military, and I say this to, in order to say, the military have to become a knowledge organization. And cybersecurity is the number one knowledge we need in the military. Because without that, everything fails. If I'm not safe, whether I'm in the armed forces, or in the Air Force, or in the Navy, I need safety, and safety is number one, controlled by the, the security, the cyber security now. We know that the, 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 the terrorists are better users of the internet than we, the, 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 the citizens, and they are using the internet not just to educate and indoctrinate but to manage actually and to conduct their attacks so we have to we have to be aware that you cannot ignore this fact in in developing in a, a, a proper uh, security system so i that's why i said we need to have an artificial intelligence Center for Cyber Security Resilience, which would be able to address and be able to be have to have more technology than the terrorists who are trying to fight you and fight us, the people. I don't want to elaborate any more, but I would like to say, in closing, I am honored to be in Dubai. I have been a, a permanent resident legally, although I am always traveling all over the world, but I have a residence, permanent residence in this country since 1960. That's a lot of years, that's more than half a century ago. I have been privileged uh, to live in this country and learn from its wisdom and from the number one wise man and his name is Sheikh Rashid, the father of uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, whom I have met in the 60s. 
and uh, I have learned from his wisdom. I have been honored to, and I'm honored, of course, to have uh, to be to have met his his highness the Emir, and uh, and I have learned, and I'll tell you this and close with a story. I'd love to take this opportunity to tell you a story. I am a Jordanian, and I live in I lived in Amman in Jordan. At that time. The king was King Hussein, who is the father of the current king, of whom I am honored to be his friend. But I was also had a great honor of being a friend of His Majesty King Hussein. And at that time, in the 60s, I think it was 65, he wanted to deliver a letter to Sheikh Rashid, His Highness Sheikh Rashid as I said, the father of our current emir. And he said, can you take this letter with you to Dubai? He knew that I was going to Dubai. So I took the letter. I asked for an audience with His Highness, Sheikh Rashid, and they said, it was Ramadan. They said, his protocol said, come for iftar in Ramadan and you will deliver it by hand. So I came, we had iftar, and I, then I went to his office. His, Highness office, and I said, I have this letter to you from His Majesty King Hussein. He said, great, but what's in the letter? I said, I don't know. I am only a messenger. I'm, I'm the mail man. I don't know what's in it. He said, how can you carry something and you don't know what's in it? Maybe it's something bad and I'll be upset with you. I said, no, I don't have that worry because I know how close you are to His Majesty. You are just brothers, and uh, I know that it must be something good. He said, okay, let me open it. He opened it. He said, do you want me to tell you what's in the letter? I said, no. He said, what do you mean? You don't have curiosity? I said, no. If His Majesty wanted to, me to know what's in it, he wouldn't have closed it, and he, wouldn't have, and he would have told me what's in it. So since His Majesty wants it to be confidential, I respect his wish, and I don't want you, please, to tell me what's in it. He said, young man, and I was a young man at that time. I am at least 20 years younger than His Highness at that time. He said, young man, I was testing you, and you passed the test. So, Pawan, I think I hoped I passed the test this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, since we have His Excellency Talal here, I would request you to take the opportunity of asking him a few 